Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today record, The Justin, First Family on the Moon, Part 2, for 1977. So let's get started. Somewhere the gravity on the moon is only one sixth that of the Earth. Elroy, where are 
are you going? Keep up. I just want to have a look around. Well, we got to stick close together. No telling what we might find on the moon. Or what might find us. Wild animals, monsters, moon people, anything. And I wouldn't want any of you to be frightened. That's my George. Always thinking of the other fellow. <laughs> Jane, Judy, Elroy, quick! Back in the rocket ship. Why, George? What's the matter? Don't just stand there, Jane. All of you, head for the rocket on the double. But, George, why? Why? Look down there, on, on the ground. I don't see anything, George. Can't you see that footprint? That's the biggest footprint I ever saw. It must be some kind of horrible monster. Oh, George, that's your own footprint. You've been walking in circles. It is? <laughs> well, so it is. I, I knew it was some kind of footprint. Hey, Pop, it must be late. It's getting awful dark. We're going into the dark side of the moon. Yeah, I can't see a thing now. Wait, I'll strike a match. Hmm, the matches won't strike. They're not wet. Oh, George, you know you can't strike matches here. There's no oxygen on the moon. Yeah, it slipped my mind. Mother! Dad! What's happening? It's a meteor shower. Quick, everybody into the rocket ship. Everybody, follow me. Boy, it's raining rocks. We haven't got much farther to go. Hurry! Quick, into the rocket. Lock the hatch. We gotta get out of here. Aye, aye, Captain. Hatch secured. We'd better radio the control center at Cape Kennedy. Right, Judy. Captain Jetson, I mean, George Jetson on the Moonbeam 1. Calling control center at Cape Kennedy. Come in, Cape Kennedy. Come in. They don't answer. Maybe we ought to phone them. You know, long distance. Keep trying, George. We've got to get out of here. If one of those meteors hits this rocket, we'll be marooned on the moon. George Jetson on the moon rocket Moonbeam 1. Calling control center at Cape Kennedy. Come in, Cape Kennedy. Come in. Dad, you forgot to turn the radio switch on. The radio switch? <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, yeah, the radio switch. There. George Jetson on the Moonbeam 1, calling Cape Kennedy. Come in, Cape Kennedy. This here is Colonel Culpepper, calling Moonbeam 1. Do you read me, son? Colonel, you've got to get us off the moon quick. Get you off the moon? You, you just got there. Don't you like being on the moon? Oh, it's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live here. But, Jetson, you're supposed to stay there. Long enough to find out if an average family can survive on the moon. I found out already. The answer is no. Negative. Why not, boy? I haven't got time to go into that now. There's a meteor shower going on. How's that, son? I say, there's a meteor shower going on. Speak up, son. I say, speak up. I can't hear you on account of that meteor shower going on. Tell our pilot at Control Center to start pushing buttons. We've got to get off the moon before the rocket is destroyed by meteors. Okay, boy. Come go away. Don't go away. Stand by. Oh, blast off. Yes, and boy, what was that? We just got hit by a big meteor. Anybody hurt? No, but the rocket ship is damaged. Stand by. We'll try to lift you off. <laughs> What's the matter, boy? I say, what is the matter? Something's wrong. We're pushing the right buttons, but we can't get that thing off the ground. I think I see the trouble, Colonel. There's a part of the automatic controls broken off. I guess the meteor jarred it loose. Jetson, Jetson boy, you got to be brave now. I say brave. I don't know how to tell you this, but... Uh... Don't tell me. I couldn't stand the bad news. What's wrong, Pop? Why can't we blast off? How can we? This rocket is operated by remote controls from Cape Kennedy by radio signals. But with this thing broken, they can't control the rocket. Boy... I wonder what Commander Cosmic would do in a case like this. I told you we should have stayed home. Oh, quit worrying, George. Everything will turn out all right. Women, they think all you gotta do is say that everything will turn out all right, and it will. Control Center at Cape Kennedy calling Moonbeam 1. Come in, Jetson. Jetson here. Jetson, I say, Jetson, we think we got a way to get you back to Earth. You have? Hear that, Chief? They're gonna get us home. How, Colonel? Well, uh... It may not work, but uh, we can try. Colonel, I'll try anything. You name it. Well, uh, are the manual controls still okay? Uh, yes, Colonel. They look okay. Why? Well, we're going to try something. We're going to radio you instructions. Now, you do exactly what we tell you, and you may make it back to Earth. You mean, you want me to fly this thing? Right. But, Colonel, I flunked my driver's license test three times. I can't fly a rocket. How do you know, boy? I say, how 
How do you know? Have you tried? Now stand by. Pay attention, boy. Oh, boy. George Kitson, an astronaut. Wow. Pop's going to be a spaceman. Wait till the kids at school hear about this. What'll I do, Jane? Do exactly as the colonel says. What else can we do? Okay. George Jetson, standing by, sir. What are your instructions? All right, Jetson. You got the whole control panel right in front of you. All the controls are marked. So here's what you do. First, flip on the hydraulic booster fuel injection switch. Turn the electronic digital computer valve clockwise. Switch on the automated orbital rectify gain. My eye, sir. Then what? Now throw it in the gear. Push in the clutch. Let the brake off. Release the clutch. And away you go. Stand by, everybody, and fasten your seatbelts. We're blasting off. Boy, that sure is a keen astronaut. He handles a rocket ship just like Commander Cosmic. Nothing to it, Elroy, once you learn the gear shift. <laughs> Gee, Pop, can I be your co-pilot? Sure, Elroy. I'll go check the fuel gauges in the back. Hey, I never noticed that door before. Wonder what's in there. I'll just open it and see. <laughs> Nothing but a little bitty old room. Hey, there's another door. I'll just open it and... Uh-oh, I'm outside. Help! Okay, Elroy. Want to handle the controls? All right. Hey, Elroy. Where's Elroy? Elroy! He's got to be in the rocket someplace. Mother, look! What is it, Judy? It's Elroy, running along outside the rocket. Elroy! George! Elroy's outside the rocket. Well, tell him to get back in here before he catches cold. Outside! Elroy! George, what are we going to do? You take over the controls, Jane. Just keep the course we're on. I'll grab a tether and try to pull Elroy back in. Poor Elroy! He's floating in space! Elroy! Where are you, Elroy? Oh, there you are, in back of the rocket. Just switch on your radio, Elroy. Okay, Dad. It's on. Don't move around any more than you have to. I'll jet myself over to you. Easy now. Steady, boy. Steady. I made it. Mother, Dad's got it, Elroy. See if you can help pull them back in. And be careful, Judy. Okay, Mom. Gee, Dad, you saved my life. Just like Commander Cosmic on TV. Oh, it's nothing any real spaceman wouldn't have done. <laughs> George, look, we're not far from the Earth. Home, sweet home. I'll take over now. <laughs> Cape Kennedy calling rocket ship Moonbeam 1. Come in, Jetson. Jetson here. We are ready to start reversing the rocket and try for a landing. Try? Oh, boy. Now, don't be nervous, son. I say do not be nervous. Just follow instructions. Ready? Ready, Colonel. First, you switch on the stabilizer. <laughs> Say, I don't know 
climb out in space far from my native land, I'd rather be some other place. For instance, bedrock land. I don't know why that they picked me for a rocket engineer. I'm sure that it is plain to see. I didn't volunteer. But here I am, an astronaut. Oh, what a sticky wicket. I wouldn't really mind it, but um, I've got a one-way ticket. So that was the Justin First Family on the Moon Part 2 from 1977. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.